Greetings, Unsettled Souls, and welcome to The Correct Views. Sam I.B. DeGangi reporting for The Media Speaks. Um, I want to dedicate this to the lovely troll on my channel that left me the stupidest comment. He said that I should get a microphone. I, I don't mean the really nice lady that was helping me. She was awesome. But he said that I should get a microphone in reference to the low def. Low def cameras plug into your computer. They don't have external mics. I go live with that. The HD ultra nice camera takes me about a day and a lot of work to render the production and add the music and all of that. That usually posts a day later, Mr. Troll. Okay guys, I wasn't even going to do one tonight because I never get sick. I really don't, but my girlfriend decided to get me sick and now I'm getting a cold. But I read this and it angered me so greatly that I absolutely had to come out and do this. I normally do six articles. Uh, shoot, I'm only doing five this time. So I'm going to spend some time on this. Uh, here's what I'm asking. Uh, those of you, uh, especially you people that know of this show and those that know me in Ohio, call Flood Akron Children's Hospital with as much negative uh, feedback as you can. Listen to this. Natural News, Mike Adams, court rules Amish girl to be forcefully poisoned with chemotherapy. Akron Children's Hospital is now practicing predatory medicine. I'm going to read a lot of this article because there are, uh, let, let me give you some background on this. I know a lot about this. Okay, cancer doesn't run in my family. It practically gallops. When my dad was sick, we didn't completely roll out chemotherapy. Uh, my brother and I and my dad um, decided that he was going to go to Hanover in Germany and uh, use the um, hypothermia. Now, hyperthermia, the, the, the medical hypo, hyperthermia, not the, not the dying, the treatment. It's in, uh, look up Dr. Wolf Hanover hypothermia, you'll find it. They sometimes use chemotherapy in tandem with their procedures, which involve changing a body temperature to cure cancer. Their cure rate is much higher than we see from chemotherapy here. My point being, there are other options, and um, you know, some people do choose to go the route of chemotherapy. Kevin Blanche, God bless him, is doing so, and that's wonderful. Some people, many people, have much better luck with medicines that are not chemotherapy or that are at least not traditional in the way that you and I would normally think of them. Natural paths are wonderful by the way. Um, due to natural path I'll be over whatever cold I'm getting probably by uh, Sunday. Listen to this guys. Just weeks after an Ohio court ruled that medical authorities could not force chemotherapy upon a 10 year old Amish girl against the wishes of her parents and the girl I may add an appeals court overturned the rule allowing the hospital with profits from chemotherapy treatments to force this girl to receive chemotherapy against her wishes of her parents. And again, I don't know anyone um, that does very well. Uh, well, I do know one. I know a man that beat uh, lung cancer and I do believe he had chemotherapy. But my ex-mother-in-law didn't. My grandmother didn't on either side. My grandfather on my dad's side didn't. My dad didn't. Hey, you see in a pattern here? This is essentially chemotherapy at gunpoint, or what I call, Mike Adams writes, predatory medicine. If the parents refuse the court order, they will be arrested at gunpoint and charged with various crimes. The Akron Children's Hospital, which stands to profit from this decision, is the new medical mafia, poisoning children with mandatory life sentences handed down by corrupt, medically ignorant judicial systems. The Akron Children's Hospital describes their action in the case as heroic, moral, life-saving, and necessary. So I called Akron Children's Hospital to ask whether the hospital would release the names of these heroic doctors who spearheaded the lawsuit. I was told that the hospital was not releasing any names and that the hospital refused to answer any questions whatsoever. Instead, they had a statement that they could email me, but nothing more. How heroic it goes on, eh? These heroes of medicine are so moral, so ethical, and so in the right that they won't even reveal their names. They choose to hide behind anonymity, probably because at some level they realize that their actions violate fundamental rights and parental rights. These are crimes against families. Let's go on. That's what I told Akron Children's Hospital Public Relations spokesman Lori Schuller, even encouraging her to do something meaning, more meaningful with her life than be a PR front woman for a destructive institution. Her answer to this? 
literally she screamed, what an asshole, and then slammed the phone down. This is an off-the-record quote from Akron Children's Hospital, by the way. What an a-hole. This is the level of professionalism that these people exhibit. They poison children for a living, then scream profanities at honest journalists trying to ask them intelligent questions about the names of the doctors involved in the lawsuit that's facing an innocent child, that's forcing an innocent child to be poisoned with potentially deadly chemicals. For the record, I didn't raise my voice at all. I was calmly asking questions, and uh, that was the response he got. Uh, I'm going to skip where he talks about her. You can read it if you want to, Rob. It's on Prison Planet as well. Um, it does say that the, uh, <clears throat> the chemotherapy agents used today were derived from Nazi, sci Nazi scientists and chemical conglomerate known as IG Farben, which was later broken up into multiple companies including Bayer, the modern-day pharma company. For example, the chemo drug thalidomide is actually an offshoot of Nazi chemical weapons. And again, thalidomide is what gave people flippers. Um, <clears throat> this is what he goes into, and I'm going to get that. He calls it a heinous crime against children. Well, one, the fundamental fraud of oncology. Let's start with the issue of oncology, that is cancer studies, and the entire cancer industry, which is based largely on scientific fraud. Here are the facts. Chemotherapy is a toxic poison. The number one side effect of chemotherapy is cancer. In other words, it sometimes creates other cancers because it's radiation. And uh, again, some natural paths use it with chemotherapy and uh, natural pathic treatments, I mean. And some people don't use it at all. Uh, there's high-level vitamin C treatments. I'm not talking about you can't go to the store and buy vitamin C. I mean, you need to get injected. There's been many, many treatments. And again, if you're someone listening to this, or God forbid, you know, anyone listening to this or myself would ever be facing it, I want the options to, you know, see what's going on out there. I don't want to be tied into needing to do something. And this is a slippery slope. Any, for the children. Anytime you hear for the children, it means screw the adults. Chemotherapy causes permanent damage to the heart, liver, kidneys, and brain. This is not a medicine without side effects. It is a medicine with serious side effects that include permanent organ damage and death. Chemotherapy, chemotherapy is so toxic that pharmacists contract cancer just from handling the chemo drugs. And there's a link that proves it. The idea that toxic chemotherapy is the only and only as important, the third time I've said it here, I'm not saying I'm against all chemo, I'm against forced chemo. The idea that toxic chemotherapy is the only available viable treatment for cancer is utterly absurd. That's, the, that's what the state would force all children into just one toxic parented, high, patented, high profit treatment as a travesty of justice and a violation of fundamental human rights. Two, human rights. Speaking of human rights, the forcing of a child into a poisonous treatment that may kill her and will undoubtedly cause immense suffering is a violation of fundamental human rights. Amen. If she wanted the chemo and was being denied it or something, you know what? I'd be the first person here trying to raise money for her. But listen, there's a reason they don't want her on it and they're right. How can Americans, America claim to be the land of the free when you aren't even free to choose what kind of medicine you prefer as treatment? The position of the Akron Children's Hospital is essentially, you are all too stupid to know what's good for you and therefore we are going to sue you and force you to submit to our high profit poisons, even against your will. They don't describe their actions in such words, of course. They claim that they are being ethical and moral and saving a child's life, etc. But these are just the ramblings of the pharma-indoctrinated medical robots who have virtually no knowledge of any systems of medicine other than the pharmaceutical system. So they are unqualified to speak about healing in the first place. Their knowledge of healing cancer is strictly limited. Uh, what that means is, um, again, I was talking about the high-level vitamin C treatments, <clears throat> the naturopathic cures, the uh, Dr. Wolf and his uh, hypothermia. They only know one course of treatment, and that is the standardized American medicine approach. And that's like saying that you're a linguist because you know two languages. That you, you're, you're, a, <clears throat> you're a great multilinguist. You know all the languages in the world because you know two. They do admit, they don't admit any of this, like nearly all other Western medical doctors, the people at Akron Children's Hospital are infested with arrogance and total disregard for basic dignity. Um, they are child predators, he writes. Issue 3, parental rights. Don't parents have the right to determine what treatments their child should undergo? 
In a free society, they would, in an American society, parents are denied nearly all rights. Instead, the state assumes them. Keep in mind the Hirschbergers are a thoughtful, loving, religious family seeking the best possible outcome for their daughter. They are acting out of love and compassion, and they are rightly skeptical of the false claims of the corrupt, criminally operated cancer industry. Do parents no longer have the right to be critical thinkers? Can they not question the lies and propaganda of the corrupt, for-profit medical system that offers no real answers for cancer? For the, state, for the state to take away the rights of these parents is to declare that all children are now the property of the state. Parents, apparently, are only temporary guardians whose job it is to give birth to new children, which are then turned over to the state. Um, obedient workers, George Carlin had said. Um, let me tell you something. There's a lot of truth in that sentence. Also, see, I'm, I'm nuts enough that the girl doesn't want it. I don't care if she's 10 or not. She's a sentient being. She's, uh, she should be allowed to have at least some say in her own medical treatment. At 10 years old, yes, at 10 years old. Should the parents be able to override the child? You could argue, yes, that's fine. But neither one of them won it. Issue 4, extreme arrogance of doctors and hospitals. What truly astonishes me, he writes, about Western medicine is its extreme arrogance. There are over a hundred systems of medicine practiced in the world, including Western medicine, which is drugs and surgery, Ayurvedic medicine, Tibetan medicine, traditional Chinese medicine, Western herbal medicine, and so on. Importantly, every one of these systems of medicine offers treatments for cancer. Most of these systems are based on plant-based anti-cancer compounds supported by a mountain of scientific literature that confirms their safety and efficiency. For example, see our sister website, science.naturalnews.com, for research on vitamin D in cancer. And I take that every day. I take selenium every day. Look up selenium in cancer. I take uh, 2,000 milligrams of uh, emergency C a day. So, I mean, there are things you can do to fight cancer. Am I going to ever get it? With Fukushima and everything, with fast food, and I do eat it uh, more than I should, who knows? But I'm doing my best, people. Passing it on to you. Check out broccoli and cancer, or even <clears throat> Reversatrol and cancer, R-E-S-V-E-R-A-T-R-O. And if you really want to learn about natural cancer therapies, learn about polysaccharides from medical medicinal mushrooms. The anti-cancer potential of medicinal mushrooms will blow your mind. Uh, there's an article on the science.natural. Keep in mind that the Akron Children's Hospital did not give this little Amish girl the option of using medical mushrooms or any such cancer treatment. She was never given the option of Gerson therapy involving juice detoxing and powerful lifestyle changes. She was probably never given any options other than chemotherapy. We'll never know, of course, because the Akron Children's Hospital refuses to answer any questions, preferring to scream you're an a-hole for their official response. Then it goes on and on and on about uh, where how the Nazis did this before. I've gone over that at nauseam. I'm going to go, the state owns your children. The decision, once again, reaffirms that the state believes that it owns your children. Parents have zero rights, zip, nada. And cancer hospitals fully support the state kidnapping, essentially, at gunpoint. Anytime the state believes that it can make their decision for the parents, the parents will be kicked out of the picture and denied any say whatsoever in the well-being of their own child. This is a North Korean approach. It is predatory medicine. No, sp no hospital has the right to force any treatment on anyone. Period. Let's be honest, he writes, about fundamental human rights, parental rights, and human dignity here. It should be the foundation of the very fabric of what freedom is in America that no hospital can force any treatment upon any patient against their wishes. Period. As Anthrax would say, over, finished, done, gone, out. This should be written into the Bill of Rights. Any person denied this fundamental right should be able to sue the hospital for violating their civil rights. Andy Hirschberger, the girl's father, he had said that the family agreed to begin two years of treatments for Sarah last spring but stopped the second round of chemotherapy in June because it was making her extremely sick, reports, reports the Detroit Free Press. Sarah begged her parents to stop the chemotherapy and they agreed after a great deal of prayer, Hirschberger said. The family members of an insular Amish community shuns many facets of modern life and is deeply religious. They live on a farm and operate a produce stand in the village of Spencer in Medina County. It's about 35 miles southwest of Cleveland. So, 
It says, even if you don't agree with the Hershberger's decision, if you support the courts ordering their child into treatment, then you support the medical mafia operating at gunpoint. And it will, it will go past the, for the children, and it will happen to you. And you support it in every context. Maybe soon the government will decide that everyone in the nation must take statin drugs. If you don't, you are arrested or fined. Got a problem with that? You'll be called anti-science and thrown into prison. Then force-fed strains until the drug companies collect enough profit off of your body. If you happen to die during the treatment, don't worry, there are plenty more bodies to take your place. So, you don't like that? I don't like it either. So it says, join Natural News. Here's what you do, people. You can call the Akron Children Hospital. It is 330-543-1000. That is 330-543-1000. I will be calling. Will you? I'm asking you to. I just spent like 20 minutes on this story. Please do this. I've never spent this long on a story. I'm in Ohio and I'm furious. Uh, webmaster at chmca.org of uh, facebook.com slash Akron Children's. Website, akronchildrens.org. All right, Correct Views Brigade, go out there and kick some tail because this is wrong. You can feel it in your bones. They're killing this girl. And if they're not killing this girl, it's up to their, fa their family to decide that. Not up to the hospitals. Not up to the government. Guys, this is a terrifying story I have here. Brits lose control of nuke reactors. An unbelievable seriousness of a major radioactive release. This is uh, shtfpplan.com. After the world witnessed a widespread radioactive disaster following the tsunami that took down power systems at the Fukushima nuclear facility in Japan, you would think that nuclear regulators and operators would have taken the threat of unforeseen accidents more seriously. Apparently not. Um, nearly the exact same scenario played out in Devonport Dockyard last summer when the primary and secondary power sources of nuclear cooling fuel became unexpected, unexplicably inoperable. It was a situation kept secret, oh, so that's what's going to happen. And I've, I've said this time and time and again. The government will hide the meltdown. The government will hide the meltdown. That's why I'm against Iran. I hope Israel does, does stop the Iran uh, opening up a power plant. I hope Israel loses its nuclear power plants. I hope the people wake up and get rid of them. I don't think America has a right to build any. I don't think Canada, I don't think anybody has a right to build a nuclear power plant because it's not just a matter of whether or not it's going to affect you. It's going to affect people within hundreds of miles and it's not. This is like the last story. You make decisions for yourself, but you can't put something like that in somebody's backyard. If you can, then I should be allowed, my neighbor should be allowed to open up a meth lab next door. Or it might blow up the whole block, but hey, we can open nuclear power plants, why not meth labs? It's the same stupid logic. It was kept secret because the implications were so serious that the entire company of Britain could have been turned into a radioactive wasteland overnight. A major nuclear incident was narrowly averted at the heart of Britain's Royal Navy submarine fleet, the Independent on Sunday can reveal. The failure of both the primary and secondary power sources of coolant for nuclear reactors at the Davenport Dockyard in Plymouth on July 29th last year followed warnings in previous years of just such a situation. Experts yesterday compared the crisis at the naval base operated by the Ministry of Defense and government engineering contractors Babcock Marine with the Fukushima Daiichi power station meltdown in Japan 2011. How is it that private citizenry does not have uh, um, ability to test within, uh, I mean not just for one or two elements, no cesium, no, all of them, uh, plutonium, iodine, cesium, strontium, uranium. Uh, America, Tritium, all of it. How is it that they can have these meltdowns and nobody, nobody, nobody picks it up that they can hide it? What the hell? Last July, a series of what was described as unidentified defects, so they don't have to identify them, they don't have to fix them, triggered the failures, which meant that more than, for no, more than 90 minutes, submarines were left without their main sources of coolant. John Large, an independent, that's another ocean, there we go again. John Large, an independent nuclear advisor who led the team, that conducted radiation analysis of the Russian Kursk submarine when it sank in the Barents Sea in 2000 said it's unbelievable that this happened. I, it could have been very serious. 
Things like this should not happen. It is, a fun, it is fundamental that these fail-safe requirements work. It had all the seriousness of a major meltdown, a major radioactive release. Among a number of areas of concern uncovered by Babcock investigation was uh, described as an inability to learn from previous incidents and to implement the recommendations of previous event reports. A subsequent review by the base nuclear safety organization revealed the unsuccessful connection of diesel generators, again, so they can't cool them when something goes wrong, they're lying, and questioned the effectiveness of the maintenance methodology and its management. While advising Babcock to address the shortfalls in their current maintenance regime, it's our stress test on Davenport safety, launched after the Fukushima disaster, said that in the event of a failure of both power supplies, heat levels in reactors could be controlled by emergency portable water pumps, and added that such a failure had occurred a number of times previously. Oh, great! If you think nuclear facilities in the U.S. and the rest of our nations are any safer than Fukushima and Davenport, it says you are mistaken. These facilities can operate under the cloak of secrecy. It is impossible for us to know how many times such incidents have occurred in the U.S. What we do know is that on March 28th of 79, the Three Mile Accident Nuclear Facility in Pennsylvania, which is why you should never ever eat Hershey's, experienced the worst nuclear power plant accident in American history when a meltdown occurred in one of the facility's two reactors. Thus, accidents at these facilities are not unprecedented. And yes, it does still affect your candy from Hershey today because that's what radioactivity does. There are currently 65 commercially operating nuclear power plants and 104 nuclear reactors in 31 states around the country. Unfortunately, the cesspool of Ohio, we have two. It says, given the sheer, uh, the sheer closeness of these plants, we're looking at some, the likelihood that something's going to happen here. Uh, it says you should get a bug out kit, uh, potassium iodide, and you should. But they're going to hide the meltdown from you, and obviously the citizen citizenry is too busy watching Miley Cyrus stick her tongue out to bother testing on a regular basis, even though we know the nuclear companies are lying to us. Friends, go to TheMediaSpeaks.com, click on Bud K. When you do, it's going to be a massive help to us, and then you're going to be getting a bunch of amazing things, such as the Avalanche Crossbow, 120 pounds, 49.98. They've got the Jill Haven Black Triple Pro Throwing Knife Set. It's only $15.98. Uh, this is the hunting closeout stuff, by the way. The Crossbow 150 pounds compound black, normally $269. It's now $179. The uh, Seek Sour SP2022CO2 Pistol Black, normally it's $79.99. Got it for $66.98. So, go to TheMediaSpeaks.com, click on Bud K, and know that when you do, you're helping the media speaks. You're helping us bring you better news, and uh, you're helping us get better gear. It wasn't that long ago I didn't have graphics, remember? All right, guys. Got graphics now. Unfortunately, the news that goes with it is dreadful. Washington Post: Christians under the threat of Syria in Syria as Islamist extremists gain influence. And you know. I'm going to make a lot of enemies here. I am in favor of pulling out of all help from both Israel and the Middle East. Just leaving. Okay, I, I am. I think Israel can take care of itself. The people have said, why should Israel be allowed to have nuclear weapons, but not uh, the um, many of the Muslim nations? I'll tell you why. Because every single nation that is Muslim today, and Michael Savage has pointed this out, every single nation is Muslim because they were forced at the point of a sword to be Muslim. Don't you realize that Egypt did not have a history of being Muslim before these animals took it over? And I don't mean Islamists are animals, I mean the people that butchered people. Everyone likes to talk about the Crusades. Do you know why the Catholics did the Crusades? And Catholics are not Christians, by the way, it's a separate religion. Yes, they believe in Jesus Christ, but when people say the Christians did the Crusades, no, they did not. The Catholics did the Crusades. But I digress. Um, you know why they did the Crusades? Which I'm not saying they were justified. They weren't. They were butchering people. Because Islam was butchering people! That's why! They were just fighting back! Um, Islam has a history of terrorizing itself into the capital as Spain. That's why we trust them less than Israel! My trouble with it is I think Israel shouldn't have them either.
Because, uh, again, you, you can't nuke somebody and have it stick to that area. It affects us all. But again, I mean, you don't see Israel threatening every neighbor it has with nuclear weapons on a regular basis. You just don't. And again, I'm not saying the people of Islam do that, but their leaders oftentimes do. And I don't care if that makes you mad to hear it. This is the correct views. When radical Islamists tore down a cross and hoisted a black flag above a church in the northern Syrian city of Raqqa last week, or maybe Raqqa, R-A-Q-Q-A-H, their action underscored the increasingly hostile environment for the country's Christians. Although Syria is a majority Sunni Muslim nation, it is one of the most religiously and ethically, ethnically diverse countries in the Middle East, home to Christians, Druze, and Shiite offshoot Awlats and uh, Ismailis. But the country's conflict, now in its third year, is threatening that tapestry. When the primary front of the war has pitted Sunni against Shiite, Christians are increasingly caught in the line of fire. The perception is that they support the government, which in many cases is true, has long made them a target of rebel groups. That's because the government prevents them from being killed. God forbid they should be allowed to live. I'm going to lose my high-def camera here. So if you want to catch the rest of the show, go to the Media Speaks. It'll be on the low-def. Same name. The Christians say radical Islamist groups such as the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria and affiliated with Al-Qaeda are determined to drive them from their homes. The Christian community in Syria is struck between two fires, said Nadim Nassar, a Syrian from Latakia, who is director of the Awareness Foundation, an interfaith charity based in Britain. One fire is a corrupt regime, and everybody agrees there needs to be a change. And on the other hand, there's a fragmented and diverse opposition on the ground who can't control jihadist forces coming inside the country. In other words, they many times support the government because the uh, non-government is trying to butcher them for no reason. Syria, Syria is not the only place in the wider region where Christians are being targeted. Coptic churches in Egypt have been attacked, and Pakistan last week experienced the deadly, deadliest church bombing in the country's history. The militants who attacked the wall in Nairobi last month singled out non-Muslims. Oh, but it's the religion of peace. Islam is the religion of peace. Ah, uh, yeah, just like a Catholicism is the religion of peace during the Crusades. Normally, are, do, do most Catholics want the Crusades to happen? I promise you they do not. They're probably very good, wonderful people. Every Catholic I know is a pretty decent person. But I will say this. Are there some Catholics that would maybe like to see the Crusades happen again? Sure there are. Well, you're dealing with several million Muslims that would like to see Sharia law in place. Again, you don't see the Jews trying to force you to be Jewish, to live in their country, or you die. Um, you, you're not going to kill you. It's, it, it's the leaders of these things. They're as bad as our country. Americans are great people. Our, country, our leaders are dreadful. So please don't think I mean that Islamists are like this. I mean they're leaders. The rash of assaults has led some to question the future of Christianity in Syria, where adherents make up about 10% of the population in the wider Middle East. So, that, I mean, it's okay to butcher 10% of your population. Syria's ruling Assad family, which belongs to the Awalakde set, has long painted itself as the protector of Syria's minorities. The leaders of Syria's opposition have pledged to provide minorities with equality in a new Syria, they are unable to control the growing number of hardline Islamist forces that are on the ground. The Western-backed Syrian Opposition Coalition denounced the desecration of the churches in Raqqa, calling it an act that showed complete disregard for the holy sites and the religious and cultural heritage. But the rejection...